Your Majesty, Your Royal Highnesses, Vice President Joe Biden, Dr. Jill Biden, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and dear friends. Tonight is the 21st time that we are honoring the, with a Crystal Award outstanding personalities who are not only exceptional artists, but also contribute to humanity. As it was agreed upon when we conceived this award, together with our late friend, Lord Yehudi Menuhin, who was an inspirational leader for so many young musicians. The Crystal Award is a celebration of the arts. Culture is the language of the heart, the expression of passion and compassion, respect for traditions, acceptance of diversity. It brings color into our lives and opens our minds and hearts. Culture is essential for the survival of humankind. The honorees of this evening are stellar examples of cultural leaders. It gives me great pleasure to introduce them to you. Olafur Eliasson receives the 2016 Crystal Award for his leadership in creating inclusive communities. Olafur Eliasson, he was born in Copenhagen and studied at the Royal Danish Academy of Fine Arts. He has created large-scale installations and designs that have contributed to redefining the essence of cities and communities. You might have seen some of his major works in one or the other capital, like the New York City Waterfall, the Weather Project, Riverbed, or most recently, during the COP21 in Paris, the Ice Watch. Olafur employs a team of more than 90 artists, architects, designers, and engineers in his studio in Berlin. My favorite project, however, is the Little Sun, a beautiful solar light, but at the same time, a social business and global project that addresses the need for light in a sustainable way and benefits communities without electricity, creates local jobs, and generates local profits. Would you please join me on stage? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Hilde. Thank you, Klaus, for having me here today. Your Excellencies, Your Highnesses. What a great company to be in. I work as an artist, this means I'm here as a representative of the cultural sector. I think the cultural sector is quite unique as it seems to host disagreement, conflict, without leading to exclusion. So Hilde might say, oh, this is a great painting, Olafur, and Klaus said, ah, it destabilizes me. I'm not sure, and they can still be together, <laughs> right? It might even strengthen their relationship, that little bit of rupture, right? So, Think about politics, right? Think about populism, nationalism, exclusion, and all of that. So culture as a methodology is amazing in terms of hosting and facilitating a conflict with a creative and positive outcome. Hilde was so kind to mention the Little Sun Project, a little sculpture, a source of energy, but really also about empowerment. This is an example of how art and creativity, together with a solar scientist who is also here, actually can come up with solutions. And I'm going to show you something today. It's the first time I show it, and I thought I brought it because of the topic of the fourth revolution. This is, in fact, a mobile phone solar charger. And this is the first time we show it to anybody besides the robust kickstart knockover we did last fall. But it's finally, it's here. So if anybody's running out of steam here in Davos, please don't hesitate to get in touch. And again, thank you so much for the inspiring leadership. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
taking it to the front. Our next Crystal Award is Will I Am. Will I Am receives the 2016 Crystal Award for his leadership in providing educational opportunities for the underserved. He was born and grew up in Los Angeles. His professional career has many facets. He is a singer, songwriter, rapper, entrepreneur, actor, musician, record producer, and philanthropist. As a musician, he is best known for his work with the Black Eyed Peas with whom he received seven Grammy Awards. He has also released solo albums and has produced the work of other musicians, including Michael Jackson, U2, and Lady Gaga. He is a role model in his long-standing commitment to inspire children to stay in school and go to college to become the leaders of tomorrow. His I Am Angel Foundation has developed numerous programs for youth in Los Angeles, such as I Am STEAM, which stands for science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. I am scholarships and I am college track are two other uh, ventures. He also has a workshop in Los Angeles and I still remember that incredible car and sports car he had built with his kids. He will tell us certainly more about his manifold activities. Would you please join me on stage? First off, I want to thank uh, the World Economic Forum, Mr. and Mrs. Klaus, thank you so much, Ms. Schwab, for acknowledging the work that we do at I Am Angel. The reason why I chose to do this work it's because I want to pay forward what was given to me when I was um, in the ghetto in Los Angeles, California. I come from a very, very poor neighborhood that's riddled with crime and gang and drug activity. But my mom was very strict, and I was more afraid of my mom than the gangsters in my neighborhood. <laughs> so music has took me around the world. and. I seen things that I wanted to bring back to my neighborhood. So every time there's a natural disaster, they call musicians or famous people to bring awareness to what's happening in the world. In ghettos that resemble um, the conditions that I come from, there's a natural disaster every day. Um, there's a tsunami of neglect. There's war between gang and rival senseless, just ignorance and crime. And I wanted to make sure that kids in the neighborhood that I come from, starting there, aim to be more than just musicians. Not that being a musician is a bad thing, it's just that our industry is collapsed. And I speak from experience that it, although you can make a living, it isn't as healthy as it used to be. And I want kids to dream to be like Steve Jobs, not just Stevie Wonder. I want kids to dream to be like um, Bill Gates. I want them to, to discipline and dedicate their lives to solving the world's problems. And the way you do that is by not waiting for government to come down and change education reform, because that you never know how long that's gonna take. So somebody has to take responsibility in their own hands and do that for communities, especially if you believe that kids that have been neglected can make something out of themselves and solve the world's problems. So I started with 60 kids, now I have 320 kids 
This year is our first graduation year class. Um, our kids started off with the worst grades um, that one could imagine. It's in and out of juvenile hall and crime and selling drugs. And now our kids have 3.5s and 4.0s. This year, I'm proud to... Uh, Our kids will go on to MIT as a really super, superstar student, because you only take one, right? So one kid could change that community forever. Because uh, my, my, my uh, vision was, what if WhatsApp came from Watts? What if Facebook came from Compton? What if Apple came from uh, Fifth Ward, Mississippi? These communities would be changed forever. And so, uh, my whole purpose is to find one or two kids. Um, and I, um, I'm really proud of this girl named Cynthia, who was our star student, who was inspiring the whole community to, to um, really just pick up the ball and be leaders. So uh, thank you so much for acknowledging the work that we're doing. I um, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Our next awardee is Yao Chen. Yao Chen receives the 2016 Crystal Award for her leadership in raising awareness of the refugee crisis. She was born in Jishi City, Guangzhou, Fujian province in China. She studied Chinese folk dance at the Beijing Dance Academy, then studied at the Beijing Film Academy. She has performed extensively on stage for television and on film as China's leading actress. She is known as the Queen of Weibo for having the most followers on Sina Weibo, the Chinese equivalent of Twitter, where she has 78 million followers. She has used her high profile on social media to influence the public on a range of issues, from environmental pollution to food safety. She is perhaps best recognized for her role as the UNHCR's honorary patron for China, traveling extensively to meet refugees in the Philippines, Thailand, Ethiopia, Lebanon, and recently in Pakistan, contributing to an exponential growth in donations from China. I think we will hear a little bit more about those trips from her. Uh, Yao Chen will uh, give her acceptance speech in Chinese. Chen, would you please join me on stage? Yao Chen, uh, Yao Chen, should we take you to the front? Thank you, the World Economic Forum. Thank you, Shi Wabo Professor and his wife. 感谢联合国难民署对我的信任，也感谢过去五年里陪我一同探访难民的每一位小分队成员。感谢我的先生曹宇给予我的爱和支持。获得这样的荣誉让我备受鼓舞。在过去五年的探访中，我听到一个又一个悲伤的故事。他们中有我无法想象的恐惧、绝望和痛苦。但在讲述者的眼中，我一次又一次的看见。Thank you, Professor Schwab, and thank you to the World Economic Forum. My deepest thanks to all of you. Thanks to the United Commissioner for Refugees for your trust and for all the companions I've had with the team on refugee visits throughout all these five years. Special thanks to my husband, Tao Yu, for your love and support. To have received such an honor is deeply inspiring. In these past five years, during my visit to refugees, I have heard the stories of their tragedies over and over. These are for me filled with.
And the world of refugees is one of darkness. A young Somali woman, a refugee, said these words to me, my world has only two kinds of day, one of happiness or one of grief. And you, uh, the people uh, here at, in attendance, are those of us uh, who have positive, the most positive energy of all. Each of you, each one of you is a beam of light that can scatter some darkness. Uh, bringing these beams together can light the way to hope and future for countless number of refugees. Let's, working together, do even and more for their sake. Once again, I thank you, you all. Our next Crystal Award winner is Leonardo DiCaprio. He receives the 2006 Crystal Award for his leadership in tackling the climate crisis. Leonardo DiCaprio was born in Hollywood, where he also grew up, and he also spent part of his childhood in Germany. He is one of the most recognized actors in the world today. He has collected numerous awards and is widely praised for his ability to excel on screen in a wide range of film genres. He has long been a passionate advocate for environmental sustainability. In 1998, he established the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation, dedicated to promoting the long-term health and well-being of all Earth's inhabitants. He has been active on a range of sustainability topics, including the protection of key species, sharks in California, tigers in Asia, elephants in Africa. He is perhaps best known for his remarkable contribution to the climate change agenda and his role as the United Nations Messenger of Peace for Climate Change. Leonardo DiCaprio, would you please join me on stage? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Klaus Schwab, Hilda Schwab, and the World Economic Forum for this generous award. Your recognition of my work for my foundation and our partners across the globe is a true honor. Last month in Paris, <clears throat> world leaders reached an historic agreement that provides concrete framework to reduce carbon emissions. This was an important first step, but we're a long way off from claiming victory in the fight for our future and for the survival of our planet. The Paris Agreement was a call to action, but it is now up to all of us to build this progress with ingenuity and a commitment to change. Together we are fighting to preserve our fragile climate from irreversible damage and devastation of unthinkable proportions. I've been traveling recently all over the world for a documentary about how this crisis is changing the natural balance of our planet. In Greenland and in the Arctic, I was astonished to see that ancient glaciers are rapidly disappearing well ahead of scientific models. In India, I met farmers who have seen their crops, their very livelihood, literally washed away by historic flooding. There's no doubt to the world scientific community that this is a direct result of human activity and the effects of climate change will become astronomically worse in the future. Last week, President Obama told those who continue to deny the irrefutable science behind climate change that they will find themselves increasingly lonely in a swell of voices calling for action. But studies also show us that those who deny the reality of climate change will also find themselves less economically successful. We simply cannot afford to allow the corporate greed of the coal, oil, and gas industries to determine the future of humanity. Those entities with a financial interest in preserving this destructive system have denied and even covered up the evidence of our changing climate. Enough is enough. 
You know better, the world knows better. History will place the blame for this devastation squarely at their feet. Our planet cannot be saved unless we leave fossil fuels in the ground where they belong. 20 years ago, we described this problem as an addiction. Today, we possess the means to end this reliance. Professor Mark Jacobson and a team of researchers at Stanford University have proven that we can meet the world's total energy demand by using existing renewable technology by 2050. To make that potential a reality, we need the collective will and conviction of political, business, and philanthropic leaders like all of you. That's, this transition is not only the right thing for our world, it makes clear economic sense and it is possible within our lifetime. A shift of this magnitude will save nearly 42 trillion in global energy costs while creating 20 million new jobs. Over the last several years, organizations and individuals worth $3.8 trillion have already committed to divest their fossil fuel holdings and replace them with new investments in clean renewable energy projects. And leaders like Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos have already pledged to help build a zero emissions future. I ask you to join them, because if we all do our part and act with bold, bold leadership, we can achieve major meaningful progress. It is not only an inevitable transition, it is also imperative for the future of our planet. Which brings me to the other side of this very important issue, and the flip side to the environmental crisis, and that is the protection of our planet's last remaining natural ecosystems. Ecosystems that provide us with breathable air, drinkable water, fertile soil, and bountiful seas. These complex ecosystems can never be replaced, and they are the foundation of our global economy, and more importantly, our interconnected climate. Life without them, as we know it, would simply collapse. Fifteen years ago today, I developed my foundation to focus on these critical issues. Currently, less than 3% of all philanthropic giving goes to defending our planet. Given this limited support, it's no surprise that roughly only 2% of our oceans and 12% of our lands are formally protected from invasive human activity like commercial fishing, agriculture, logging, and energy extraction. Again, 3% of all philanthropic giving goes towards the protection of our only home, planet Earth. Today, at LDF, we are achieving tangible, exciting results with over 70 partners across 40 countries and all five oceans. By working with the innovative grassroots organizations and leaders, we've quickly donated critical funding they need to rapidly scale up their work. Over the last decade, we've provided direct grants to support projects that have expanded protected areas on land and on sea, protecting iconic endangered species, and empowered indigenous communities to fight back against corporate encroachment on their lands. But this number needs to grow, and with your help and partnership, it will. Generosity is the key to our future. With that, I'm pleased to announce today a $15 million grant and new commitments from LDF to fast-track cutting-edge sustainability and conservation projects around the world, a prime example of climate change and environmental protection is our grant to the Rainforest Action Network and their partners on the ground to protect the last remaining rainforests on the Indonesian island of Sumatra. Over the last year, major fires across Sumatra have released more carbon emissions every day than the daily activity of the entire U.S. economy. In an effort to protect these last remaining rainforests, the vital lungs of our planet, our foundation is funding their effort to preserve 6.5 million acres from the invasive and destructive practices of the palm oil industry. We are underway with similar efforts in the Amazon rainforest of Ecuador. We are supporting the Kaibo Alliance, an indigenous effort to stop rampant and destructive oil extraction that is poisoning their lands and communities. In the United States, we are partnering with the Solutions Projects to promote clean energy and support local efforts to implement these projects in their communities. And in our seas, we have partnered with Google and funded the Global Fishing Watch, 
which is a revolutionary new platform that will actively monitor and ultimately help end the destructive practices of overfishing. Additionally, we are backing an effort to protect the size of Nebraska and the Indian Ocean off the coast of the Seychelles Islands, which is home to vital marine species. Imagine what we can all do with more partnerships, with the alliance of many of you in this room. So much can be done if we all work together. With your help, we can quickly identify and fund the most innovative and effective projects that have the greatest potential to avert the crisis we face. As I look across this room, I'm optimistic that our ability to convene the most significant and influential minds in the planet can result in the global transition necessary to protect both our society and our natural world. Now, the challenges before us require each and every one of us to take action. We owe this to ourselves, but more importantly, we owe it to future generations who are counting on all of us. Thank you all very much, and thank you for this great honor. Thank you so much. Thank you.